Welcome back to the Air Crime Crypto channel. Wishing you a happy and healthy start to this nice little Sunday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. It is a bit of a later day today simply because we are preparing for a bit of a trip later this week. So today's video is going to have to be a little more dialed into the most important points on the macro. So we won't be going as as in detail as we typically like to do, but we can still get uh, we can still get the main points across. Obviously, who knows how the how long how how the hell long this one will be, but I'll try to focus it down. And most importantly, or sorry, not most importantly, it's not that important at all. However, I would like you to know that there are a bunch of scammer accounts on Instagram with very similar names to mine. I can assure you that I'm not them. If you're looking for my actual real account, it is in the link in the description below of which I have one for the brand and then one for my actual self. Anyways, uh, is there anything else that I want to get into right here? No, man, it's time to get deep and dirty into the price action. So we're going to come back to a lot of the data over here on the main page. There's a lot of very interesting and very important and pertinent details that are really driving the main analysis, one of them being, of course, open interest right here. But for right now, I want to first nail it down on the short term time frames, do a brief overview on that follow up on yesterday's analysis, and then we'll get into the fun stuff for the long term. So let's get on over here. And let's start it off with the shorter term time frames, like a four hour and what do you know, Bitcoin still within the same range that we've been looking at. However, we are starting to see Bitcoin show a little bit more signs of a test towards the top side of that range about 39,300 as we did say was likely coming into this weekend here. But realistically, I'm not less I'm not necessarily looking for a break over the weekend this is more or less likely a setup for the week to come. So with that in mind, it's still the same criteria to validate an actual breakout in this case with targets up to very likely at least $40,000, a little bit above $40,000. Personally speaking, I do think that Bitcoin would make a nice run somewhere between about 41 and 42, or sorry, 41 and 43 specifically before the next sort of uh, decision will be made on the actual structure of this asset. By the same token, I would actually put a nice little, nice little line right here, like draw the line on a chart. I, <laughs> not a big fan of that, but, but 34,500 is my criteria now for validating uh, not just a major downside, but a continuation all the way down somewhere between about twenty-nine dollars to $30,000 with very likely another bounce somewhere right around there. But uh, well, probably not good things after that, after that bounce. But anyways, that's a little bit further away from where we're at right now. So I don't think it's too much relevant to be speaking about. And more importantly, again, the same criteria for validating a continuation of this upside move. It's the same as yesterday, 39,300 on a four hour closure or a daily above about $39,000 would do it for me. And then yes, I'd be looking for another, you know, two to $4,000 rally up somewhere to the shallow $40,000 territory. Keep in mind, however, that doesn't really do too much even for the uh, even for the daily right here, simply because we do see if I get rid of my moving averages right there. We do see that the 382 is actually right around $40,000. But above there, we do see the 0.5 directly in line with the last lower high on the daily. So as always, trend takes over everything else. And as long as Bitcoin is operating in a lower high fashion, you know, this is overall bearish, hard to talk about hopium. Although, you know, we can talk about the validation conditions necessary to reverse, uh, you know, price action right here. But of course, you know, that is now going to have to incorporate the weekly as well. And that's very far away. To put it bluntly, as long as Bitcoin is below 40 thousand dollars there's no real talks of any long-term macro reversal off the lows here but hey that is still a pretty massive range in the sense that bitcoin could rally up ten thousand dollars from where we're at right now uh into like you know uh, late mid to late february in this case and uh and that would be definitely a tr or i would imagine a very tradable moment but ultimately it doesn't really do anything for the higher term time frame so i want to be very very deliberately clear with that because you know a lot of the time we're going to get caught up uh, myself included in this as well uh caught up in moves against the current trend that don't really do anything but look impressive nonetheless so please understand that that is where things actually do start to change until then i'd still be going level by level in this case using the 382 as sort of the next major region that if bitcoin can close a medium or higher term time from above that region i would look for extension all the way up somewhere around the 0.5 which again is around that last lower high so that would be uh, more or less an area between about 43,500 specifically to 44,500 in this case so a thousand dollar range right there and that would be the next major area i'd be looking for a bit of a pullback upon the actual, uh, you know, meeting of that price action. And then the real question is, is Bitcoin close above $44,000 or not? If it does, yes, I would extend that another, you know, four to $5,000, somewhere between about 48 to maybe even as much as $50,000 right here. That's where things really start to matter for the macro. So until that happens, again, short term timeframes, I don't even really need to look at too many uh, uh, indicators here. It's actually quite, quite 
quite dry and simple. And of course, below 34,500, I do look at price action as no longer more likely to bounce before having a downside continuation, two new lows on this run. In that case, you know, a targeted region of about $29,000 to $30,000 would be reasonable uh, in what I'm looking for essentially before the next, you know, major bounce potential. So with that in mind, uh, that is essentially to say, as long as Bitcoin is above, uh, above 34,500, I am looking for Bitcoin to trade sideways and up outside of this range into early, mid, maybe even late February with those next targets in mind upon the validation conditions that we just spoke about. I'll just briefly bring up momentum oscillators right here just to see what we're looking at right now. I don't really see anything that's too obvious. Maybe a short-term pullback is a little bit more in the cards, but again, short-term pullback is not the same thing as a short-term reversal. So please have those major areas out in mind and I'll actually really avoid talking about the very short-term timeframes, like anything under an hourly in this case, which I typically don't uh, discuss anyways. But if I am looking at an hourly for what it's worth, yeah, a little bit of a uh, little bit of a short term pullback, you know, perhaps in order, especially considering that CME did close on Friday at thirty seven thousand seven hundred and seventy. So we probably hang somewhere around that region to uh, to close the week out a little bit later today at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is so you can see basically on CME it was right around your range highs right there, but not quite uh, not quite exactly where we're at right now. So, you know, Bitcoin more or less probably stays around here, maybe takes another five hundred dollar move to the downside around that time. But ultimately doesn't really mean all that. That much so uh, that's just a long way of saying I don't really expect too much until um, in, until uh, CME opens at minimum and we probably hang around this region until then okay cool so what I wanted to get into next uh, let's go over here now into the daily and do we see anything of particular interest here on the daily yeah I want to once again talk about why I think this next move to the upside while you know it could, it could play out you know even ten thousand dollars to the upside uh, it is still most uh, most forefrontish a corrective move. Why is that? We're working off of extremes on daily BBWP here, and we're actually already below the moving average on this indicator. And on top of that, we do see that the daily jewel is showing upside momentum, but that within the context of declining volatility is a corrective move first and foremost. It doesn't mean, however, that Bitcoin can't set up for a reversal over the more long period of time. But if we, if Bitcoin is going to get a reversal like that, it's probably going to look something a little bit more like this. So here's the hopium essentially. The hopium is that Bitcoin in the next you know two three maybe even four weeks essentially puts in something like this you know maybe a short-term downside move doesn't matter more importantly validation above here validation above here and then the big one right here obviously at the uh 618 in this case um but ultimately let's say bitcoin gets you know somewhere between the 0.5 and the 618 which is your traditional bull trappy region off of a uh well <laughs> off of you know off of your first rally after a massive downtrend in this case anyways uh i would expect price action somewhere in this region right here to show some weakness and pop back down. The question is, after it pops back down, does Bitcoin get in a higher low specifically above the $40,000 territory right here, the 382, or does it maybe bounce there, put in another lower high and break below specifically that region? If you see that, if you see a daily closure below $40,000, that would be a very good indication that Bitcoin is very likely going to revisit not just current, its current lows, but very likely make a full on move all the way down to the same lows that you saw in July and January of the past year, somewhere between about $29,000 to $30,000. Very likely things would bounce around there. However, that would very likely just be that, you know, a bounce before a long-term continuation that can take months and months and months and months and months to play out. Um, so, you know, very likely going to be waiting a long time here, either which way the hopium, however, and this is how I will confirm a full on bull market to the fucking moon. Well, maybe not the moon, but basically back up to prior all time highs and very likely build on there over time would be if Bitcoin bounces and puts in a higher low somewhere within this region right here. And then specifically trades back above and closes above that 618 Fibonacci retracement. If you want to be super uh, conservative, then you'd be waiting very likely for the December highs right here at that $52,000 number. If that happens, very likely Bitcoin makes a move somewhere around 60,000 right here. If my drawing does it <laughs> does it justice, maybe not. Uh, and very likely new highs, you know, in the months to follow after that. Regardless of what uh, of what direction that Bitcoin takes, very 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 likely to take a long time for this to play out at minimum. So when we're looking at the higher term time frame. Oh, Jesus Christ, I did it again. When we're looking at the higher term time frames right here, you know, I still do think that Bitcoin is is more likely to bounce out of this region for several reasons. One, because obviously we are essentially coming off of, you know, major macro support, that being your $30,000 region. This week that we got to the downside earlier this past week, you know, essentially uh, solidifies those conditions. 
would this be a higher low no it is a lower low and that is why i would be cautious of lower high watch within this region right here because that would be essentially confer uh, confirmation of bearishness long term in the macro with targets down probably to twenty five thousand dollars to be fair however long term uh you know back above this region right here well, it's, it's, it would be very reminiscent of what we saw actually over the summer in this case, where Bitcoin did initially get a lower low. I think it's a little bit easier to look at on a line chart like this, maybe like that. Yeah, there we go. It initially got an ever so slightly lower low in July in comparison to your January lows right here on the weekly, but that was not followed by a lower high on the weekly, which is what is necessary in order to confirm a macro or sorry, a weekly reversal. And the weekly reversals are rather powerful in Bitcoin land because all of them have correlated with the macro direction for, you know, in many cases, like year or two to come. So with that in mind, um, you know, if, if, if Bitcoin was to get a lower high somewhere within this region right here, especially that would be, well, your confirmation of reversal, thus, at least in my opinion, uh, or at least what I would be looking for, what the statistics and probabilities would likely show is a major move down below $30,000 territory. Until then, I guess that's the hopium uh, right here. That would be kind of like best case scenario, worst case scenario. Um, I guess, you know, best case scenario is that Bitcoin just green deals away from exactly right here. And worst case scenario is that Bitcoin just jumps exactly from here. But I think that's a lot less likely to happen. This market's designed to bore the ever loving shit out of you, which means that, you know, it's going to have its ebbs and flows, of course. Anyways, uh, while we're on here on the weekly, is there anything else that I want to speak about? Uh, weekly jewel is starting to get into the same level that we actually did see the bottom at in July, that is. Uh, and also, this doesn't really go too far back. Let me go to a more long running chart. And also same same levels that we did see on the December 2019 low right here as well. Now this one again was before a nice run to the upside, but eventually did dump in its face after the old uh, flu dump right there, we'll say. And then there's actually several times uh, in the past where we've seen it even, you know, uh, I would say significantly lower than where we're at right now as well. So this is not like a historical region, but we did see that area, um, you you know, bounce it in the summer, that is. Okay, going back on over here into our stochastic momentum charts. Of course, I should let you know that you can actually get this indicator in the, I think there's a link in the description. Maybe there is, maybe there's not, whatever it is. It's on It's on the uh, It's on the Crown Trading app right now uh, in the store. Uh, the reason why I'm letting you know that because like, we got, uh, got, I'm probably going to get an email about this and I can just let you know right here on the actual video instead. Cool. Anyways, uh, as far as the daily goes, we do still see that momentum is headed up to the, uh, is to the upside. As long as Bitcoin's close in daily is above 36 6,550, which is of interest here simply because if Bitcoin were to turn down at this region, this would be essentially a rejection of getting out of the bearish control zone. So, you know, I'm usually not a humongous fan of weekend price action, but in this case, I want to measure this up against CME and CME is actually looking a lot more obviously bullish right here uh, for the short term. I should really be care more careful with my language. What I mean to say is that it's more likely to go to the upside here, you know, in line with what we do see on price action as well, which daily still casts momentum remains the upside as long as Bitcoin is closing above 35,550, which obviously did on Friday. So the next open that we get, you know, should continue from there theoretically speaking the biggest thing today however and probably the most important thing that's really going to govern my own um my own uh uh expect expectations no my own analysis and what i would be essentially looking for is the next confirming factor of an extremely high probability of a major bounce in our mitts uh in this case to the upside would be the five day and by extension the weekly closure that is coming in today actually so that would be at 7 p.m eastern eastern standard time or zero utc basically what is interesting about the five day right here is that we're gonna have a chance to see across the upside for the first time basically since the september run to new all-time highs uh, but more or less it is a lot more of an interesting place right here because it is coming off of the critical reads which we've only seen that happen you know a few times in bitcoin's history in fact just one two three four maybe you consider this one over here as well um i'd say that's yeah, that's not as far down as where we're at right now but why this is relevant is because this will be confirmed uh upon closure today with any sort of a closure above 35 575 essentially which is you know a good few thousand or a good couple thousand bucks below where we're at right now two and a half thousand to be exact or somewhat exact um, but so, it, you know, it's very likely to cross the upside today, barring a major red dildo party before end of day. But what is also interesting is that coming down into the critical regions like this, we have seen that again, one, two, three, four times in the past, three of those four times have been macro cycle lows. Obviously this was uh, December, 2018, 3,100 max, uh, macro cycle low right here. Keep in mind, it actually did still take, you know, two months before it got going to the upside. 
Uh, this one over here from January 2015, that was the macro cycle low uh, from 2014, 2015. Again, took you know two to three months going sideways right here, even retested around the low as well, and then off to the races, right? The one before that was, was one that was not a macro low. And in this case, still very interesting, however, because it did produce a 70% or more than 70% 70, 70 bounce on a closing basis was about uh, just under 20% right there. Now, it is a little bit disingenuous to compare this to the past because obviously Obviously, we would not expect similar signals to produce the exact same percentage gains. We're just kind of going off of, uh, you know, what might be just relevant in this case. But I'd imagine still probably good for like a 10 to 15 percent bounce um, or probably more like 10 percent bounce, uh, even if it does end up failing and do something like this where it does eventually come lower. Again, my sort of ideas for lower would be somewhere between about 23 to 25 thousand dollars, what I think is max uh, max to worst case. Um, barring, barring like a nuclear uh, war or something like that, maybe, or, or something of, of equal importance. Anyways, the time before that was your October 2011 macro cycle lows here as well. Again, you actually did see it uh, essentially retest those lows. We did not see any closing lower lows in this, or sorry, we did see a closing lower low right here, but no, uh, no closing wick lower lows and no wick lower lows just in general, actually, now that I look at it. So keep that in mind as well if my eyes are not deceiving me right there anyways that is why i do bring this one up um there is one made uh is there one major counterpoint actually no there is not a major counterpoint to what i was about to say um so fair enough yeah i think i'll just leave that one right there the weekly is not as in or sorry not in as of a um you know, obvious position as well. It'd require 45,000 bucks right here. But again, uh, the weekly and the five day coming down at the same time, obviously you do expect the five day to, you know, lead into the weekly, but both of them coming down and turning within this region in the past has been, you know, some pretty good bottoming areas, if not for anything else, a nice relief rally. So, you know, Bitcoin could very easily play, I don't know, 10 to 15% off the, I mean, more like, more like 20 to maybe even 30% off the lows. So not really do all that much. Um, but that's still, you know, a rather tradable uh, area. On top of that, I do see my more experimental indicator over here. Uh, it's not a, it's not a signal just yet, but typically when you get into this region, you know, you're getting very, very close, and that should naturally uh, front run the stochastic momentum right here, just for what it's worth. Same thing on the five day, which it already is actually given a bit of a long signal for uh, for what it's worth as well. All right, cool. 16 minutes into this bitch, and. Let's talk a little bit more why it's likely to bounce here than not. Uh, I want to round out this case just a bit more. Uh, first, I wouldn't say this is first and foremost, but just, you know, an obvious one is going to be the monthly 21 exponential average, which is a natural region to be taking profit from for the people who are shorting this bearish divergence right here. So, you know, if you were short and you are taking profit, then obviously you are going to be doing what? You're going to be buying your shorts back. So in this case, likely to bounce around this region. Um, on top of that, we do see that this was your quarterly backfill from our summer reversal, actually, and also a test of the nine as well. Just uh, sorry, the nine uh, EMA right here, that's cyan moving average. And just as an aside, anytime that we have seen a uh, quarterly backfill in Bitcoin's history, um, it's usually been a good balance point, to be fair, but all quarterlies have been backfilled in Bitcoin's history. In fact, you see this, oh, Bitcoin coming down a little bit in the short term, like we said. Right, sounds fucking, that sounds really uh, up my own Angus right there. Look, just pointed it, just pointed it out. Sorry, just disregard that, that was stupid. Um, anyways, uh, all of these are, I think, quite uh, obvious here. The only one that's a little bit different is uh, this one from January 2019. This one was not back tested immediately on the next uh, quarterly. This one was actually back tested on the flu dump about a year later, actually, a little bit more than a year later. So I do th I, I thought that that one was a little bit more interesting as well. Anyways, for right now, you know, this is. I mean, it actually still does look like one major massive consolidation on the highs, which it is, which is also denoted by monthly volatility over here as well. The problem with that is, is that uh, this can still come lower and that would that might even correlate with price action coming lower as well. Anyways, uh, and also monthly jewel being downside angled coming into the last couple days of uh, the trading month here. Not the best signal as well. Not that I think that it's like a fully actionable one just yet. But if we see volatility turn up with monthly jewel still angled down, that would be rather concerning. <laughs> that would be rather concerning. The last time that we saw that was actually leading into uh, the 2018 mega dump off from about 60, uh, just over $6,000 to $3,000. 
um, which which took a couple months to play out uh, from that signal given. Anyways, uh, okay, cool. Um, let's get into. Okay, yes, we got that. Yeah, another uh, uh, another couple things that do suggest bounce is more likely first before not uh, on the medium and higher term time frames, not on the short term time frames. Short term time frames coming down right now would be this. Would be the funny rates chart right here. You can see that it's been consistently negative for the last uh, week and a half. Now we actually had a one day of positive. That was yesterday, Saturday, and right now it's you know it's. I wouldn't say it's like super negative or anything. It's negative not point uh, not one one, but that does add up over time, especially when it's been consistently around that region for about a, a little bit over a week now. You know, shorts are essentially paying to hold their positions. They're paying it to the longs, obviously. So at some point, you know, coming off of a weekly macro support at thirty two thousand or thirty three thousand dollars. You know, you're either you're either getting a little bit too greedy with not closing uh, if you were short from higher, or you are uh, way too aggressive coming off of a major region like that. Uh, maybe just looking for a shorter term uh, time frame move. But regardless of that, you know, this is starting to become a lot more of a tangible thing over here. We do expect the funny rates to be negative uh, during a massive downtrend. Obviously, it can stay negative for a while, but it does align with a you know with a higher probability of bounce out of this region first. Um, and then what else did I want to talk about? Yeah, leverage ratio uh, up to the fucking moon. That's that's not bullish, but fair enough. And uh, was there anything else that I wanted to mention over here? Um, yeah, I think it's time to get into, or maybe we could talk about options. Actually, I haven't really looked at this too much. Oh, a nice smile right there. Beautiful. Um, max pain price uh, for tomorrow is $38,000. Not that it means much, but let's look at uh, what's the next biggest expiration. Yeah, March's. Uh, now that we just had January expiration, it's going to be March quarterlies. And what are March quarterlies looking like right now? Okay, so this is very interesting to me. And this almost directly coincides with what we're saying on the macro. I would feel extremely, extremely confident to say Bitcoin will not close above $50,000 by end of March. It can trade above fifty thousand dollars in March, up until the uh, whatever the uh, to the twenty fifth of March. But very unlikely to close on the twenty fifth of March above fifty thousand dollars. These very likely do expire worthless. Most options, eighty percent of options, typically expire worthless. Options were created to be sold, as the saying goes. By the same token, you have the thirty thousand dollar put strike over here. Uh, well, bit up to the fucking moon as well. <laughs> you know, almost similar to the call. Uh, almost similar to the calls. Feel very confident that we do not see a break below thirty thousand dollars on a daily closing basis by March twenty fifth as well. Very likely trade between these two. You see a max pain price at forty five thousand dollars that would actually play directly in to our analysis earlier where the sort of uh bull trappish region would be for it you know at minimum you know a very likely turn down from this region the question is what happens after that turn down does bitcoin put in a higher low or not or does it or does it essentially fail forty thousand dollars if it does obviously going to be macro bearish if it doesn't well maybe not so macro bearish there was one more other thing that i forgot to talk about uh on bitcoin sorry about that rounding up the more likelihood or the higher likelihood of a short-term bounce first daily macd once again cross the upside how much do i trust this one well it's okay uh remains to the upside as long as bitcoin's above about thirty thirty five thousand dollars 35 000 and will continue to rise on the histogram so positive momentum uh continues above 36 250 so uh, just keep those numbers in mind. All right, sweet. Okay, so we spoke about that. We spoke about that. Let's talk now about the the long term, <laughs> which you may or may not like. Uh, let me maybe briefly reference this. I might have missed something right here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, also on the topic of more likely to bounce out of this region first uh, would be the Gaussian channel. In this case, you can look at this as essentially a test of the bottom of the channel here after breaking the median, um, which is what we were looking at last week to get that next move down. We got that. Now it's more likely to bounce out of this region and at, l and at least test the median band, which guess where it is? Just under $41,000 right now will naturally be rising up uh, over time. Uh, well, maybe not over too much time, but at least for the next week, probably. So there you go. Same thing with the five day as well. Dancing on the bottom side of the Gaussian channel, very likely to bounce out of this region first. You know, presumably or technically speaking, this one would have a bounciest region basically between about 45 to forty six and a half thousand dollars. Don't those numbers sound familiar? Yes. The FIB uh, bull trap ish zone. If if Bitcoin is going to bull trap also options max pain kind of between those two major strikes, essentially. Um, well, a little bit more weeded towards the upside, obviously, but you get my point. OK. All right. Um, OK, so let's talk about some bearish shit. How about sorry. Did I say did I say the B word? No. Of course, this is a channel of traders. 
you know, we don't, uh, we, we, we don't really look at it like that. Oh, and also, forgot to mention this as well, also on the side of more likely to bounce is the fear and greed index being in the 24 read zone, which is, of course, the extremely fearful zone of which we've been there for about a little over two months now. Um, this is starting to become very comparable to what we saw over the summer where Bitcoin spent um, almost three months within the extremely fearful zone right here before getting that nice major move to the upside, uh, kind of doing the same thing over here. So, you know, typically speaking, uh, you know, more likely to bounce out of this region than not, let's say. And also the Nupple as well is actually, <laughs> that's a great name, uh, is down around the same lows that we saw from the summer here too. So. You know, wouldn't really take too much to bounce. If I'm looking at risk rewards, if I'm looking at probabilities, if I'm looking at statistics, if I actually was showing my stuff over here, well, that's again more likely to bounce than not out of, out of a region like this over the next few weeks. Um, okay, cool. So let's get on to the long term bear stuff then and why I think it's actually a little bit more likely right now that Bitcoin, uh, that whilst Bitcoin probably does rally to this region, probably do see uh, major highs being put in, maybe in the upper $40,000 territory. Or at least if we saw something like that, that's really going to confirm the validity and the. Uh, the 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 severity of these signals that we're going to talk about right here all right so first and foremost global open interest perhaps the most important indicator that we're going to talk about pretty much ever because it has been so fucking consistent and just blindly following this has been massively profitable but we are starting to see it once again kind of catch its feet right here some of what we saw back on over in december before that um six thousand dollar rally actually from uh like 45 46 thousand to 52 thousand bucks um and uh, you can kind of see this sort of this sort of same behavior on a lot of these lows but you know again more likely to bounce within this region here but long term you know we are looking at a macro reset based off of a macro consolidation so I would expect this to actually come down perhaps somewhere between the September lows right here and, and the summer lows right here. I don't think that it'd be relevant to think that it would come all the way down to the summer lows just because, you know, there's more market participants now, there's more ETFs, there's more institutional investors, which are naturally going to be, um, you know, well, raising that up because they just have positions, you know, on fucking, you know, on leverage, basically. Um, and then also, you know, uh, uh, what else was I going to say on that? And then also, I mean, with more institutions, and they're just going to naturally be using uh, derivatives to be, you know, covering their their positions. They're not like uh, the normal retailers who will just hold positions and have like unlimited risk on both sides. Like they don't they don't do that, or it's not that they don't do that. They cannot do that because the risk management officer is going to be yelling at their face, as uh, as I've had in the past myself. <laughs> it's like you get a call and it's like, "Hello, Pries. Hey, sir. Uh, have you noticed that you have?" That you, have, that you that, have you know, have you noticed that your that you have x amount of deltas to the upside and you have no fucking downside cover hey maybe want to change that or we're going to get rid of you <laughs> so you can't you can't do that in a professional sense as a as like a retailer you know being your own boss and mostly just playing around with you know fun money um you know people obviously don't care they use it more like gambling but that's not how the the people who move this market that's not how they uh really look at that so again i do expect this to kind of move up out of here what would be very concerning and this would be uh, like a really really damning thing if, if if we see it in my opinion is that if we saw the open interest get above 13 billion because all major corrections have started basically just above 13 billion that is 25 percent or more on all of them by the way in the past year um whilst bitcoin gets somewhere between about 44 and 48 thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars whatever it ends up being um if, if i see something like that that would be a really good setup and in, in fact pretty much the same setup that we saw on the last few major highs actually um, in that same region, in fact, as well, which is uh, rather damning. Uh, on top of that, again, on the bear side, you know, leverage ratio over here, going to the moon and beyond. Again, we do naturally expect this to go up over time, but still, this is, you know, this is extreme for already extremes. Uh, so I do think I do put that more on the bearish side. Uh, let's 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 round up this case a little bit more. So let's bring up this chart. Uh, I think that this chart is also a major unsung hero. We pointed it out a few times in December and followed up in it in January as well. And that would be the U.S. Uh, the U.S. Te the basically tether dominance uh, chart right here. I'm going to put it on a line chart in this case. It's going to be represented by the cyan right here. And you can see and probably uh, intuitively understand that when tether dominance goes up, what does that mean? It means that that people are essentially pulling out of their cryptos into Tether. When do you do that, essentially? You do that, well, to conserve your US dollar value. Why do you want to conserve your US dollar value? Because your crypto value is going down, most likely, which it very, you know, which it very much has in the last, uh, in the last uh, two and a half months now. Um, 
So in this case, while it actually is, again, more likely to pull back after testing the prior highs from September 2020 and uh, July 2021 right here, both major lows actually, uh, that first and foremost is, I would have to be looking for it to put in a higher low after that and then potentially a major breakout. Again, that would, that would imply that Bitcoin does long-term break down. I'm holding off my long-term views on this one because I just want to present the data as it is. Um, and then you can you know decide for yourself. But basically what we can do with this is we can compare it to a Bitcoin chart in orange, which I'll just bring up right here. Uh, let me just, uh, let's pull up maybe Finex, yep. And what, what I'll, hey, that's not it. Oh, <laughs> that's Bitcoin shorts. We don't care about that. Uh, Bitcoin USD right there. Uh, yes, this would be much better. There we go. Let's put on log scale so that you can see it very easily. And you can see that um, pretty much throughout the whole totality of the recorded history of this chart, they have been playing opposite of each other, as you would expect. The only time that you saw them both play with each other to the upside consistently for a long time was coming off of the March 2020 lows right here into October 2020 right here, at which point Tether Dominance really started to fall as Bitcoin essentially broke out out of its prior all-time highs of the 2018 macro cycle. So, you know, if we're speaking theoretically here, why would they both rally at the same time? Both Tether and, and cryptos were rallying to the moon and beyond after this was, of course, the flu dump. And, you know, what was happening during that time? Infinite printing. So, you know, both both were kind of just going up to the moon, and I imagine Tether just went up, just got dragged up simply for the fact that its market cap was increasing uh, due to you know just the general market here. Anyways, um, so yeah, you know, in in this case, you know, we're right again at the prior highs, so very likely to pull back short term, which very likely does equate towards upside price action for Bitcoin. That is, but have to be looking for higher lows. So where am I looking for on the higher lows? How far how far back can this one pull back without actually losing its structure? Could pull all the way back down to like low 4%, uh, that being about 4%, even maybe as little as four and a quarter, but very likely it does pull back from here. Um, I would say that this one starts to lose its trend. It's kind of hard to judge it right now because we don't really have too much going on right here, but it wouldn't be until we start to see dailies below about three spot eight, three spot eight percent uh, for tether dominance. Until then, all pullbacks are higher lows and have to be treated as such for long-term continuation. The weekly, you know, again, likely to pull back here after testing your last few highs. I mean, this is where this thing typically finds its highs, but higher lows would be still long-term bullish and same thing on the monthly right here as well. So again, more in the bearish camp. Uh, on top of that, we can also bring up good old, or maybe not so good old, where the fuck is it? Dixie right here humongous move humongous move to close out friday uh, as you can see right there we've been bullish on this one for a while we even got the pullback that we we're looking for right here that pullback again just another higher low so this is continuation by fucking definition i am looking for this one to trade up into february march uh somewhere around about 98 dollars long term on the quarterly this is just not is simply put it is not a bearish chart this is very likely to work its way up maybe even past a hundred dollars uh but I, I would imagine in the next half year to a year, very, very likely 99 to 99 and a half, uh, at least that is. So I, I have no reason to be bearish on this chart at all whatsoever, as long as you're above, especially about 95 and a quarter on a weekly in this case. And right now it's just continuation. Is this inherently bad for Bitcoin with Dixie going up? No, because Dixie is relevant towards a basket of other fiat currencies. But we have seen these two play against each other on the macro direction in the past, which I do think deserves a bit of recognition here. Let me once again do the same uh, setup as we did before with Tether Dominance. You can see, well, in this case, no, they both rallied with each other. They both fell down right here, both rallied. Interesting. They actually don't really have much of an inverted relationship until uh, 2020, um, May. Huh. Very interesting. I mean, obviously right here, Bitcoin rallying and Dixie falling, but they were all, they were rallying in unison with each other since 2014 for like the next couple of years, for, that, for like the next three years, actually. You know what? I, uh, I'm going to push back on this chart right here. The more and more that I look at it, the more and more that I think that it's just less relevant, but it would be uh, safe to say that Dixie, I do expect it to go up, um, which is not inherently bad for Bitcoin, but you can maybe make the argument that it is. So I, I think it's important to talk about these things, not necessarily because uh, not, not necessarily because I believe in it, but because it has been relevant in the past. So I'll just leave that right there. Then again, you know, Dixie being bullish, maybe maybe, you know, maybe that maybe that should be in the bullish camp for Bitcoin right there. Uh, maybe I may maybe I'm being a little bit too uh, silly with that. Anyways, the other thing I wanted to mention on the bearish case as well is, of course, the good old head and shoulders right here. 
All right, I guess, <laughs> what the fuck is that? LARP line's trying to save price action right there. So we did have a, a head and shoulders on price action that we called out in December. That was uh, validated in the first week of January. And that actually does have a tentacle target um, a little bit lower than where we're at right now. This one was pointing down almost directly towards $30,000, basically in the middle point of this blue box. Um, so could you argue that this is close enough in this case? You could argue that is too, that is close enough. You could also argue that there is a failure implied target to be met as well. So here's where things become a lot more interesting to myself for the long term and why $52,000, if you are uh, a little bit more on the conservative side, is extremely relevant, or it's more like 50,000 bucks on a weekly in this case. But uh, for a head and shoulders, when you do see it essentially slink below what would be the neckline, in this case, that would be right here, and then it doesn't necessarily meet its, its full target and then pops back up and specifically takes out what the right shoulder was, you can take that same implied target and apply it to the upside, which would be pointed towards, you know, just shy of 80,000 bucks, actually, somewhere more around like 77 or so. So I do think that that is uh, relevant to talk about. Of course, it's, you know, nowhere near being confirmed right now, but basically... If you look at it like this, um, you know, if you if we do see a lower high in the weekly somewhere right around here like this, you know, boom, then we'd expect the full on measure move for it to be uh, met. So that's why I do say that um, if you do see that that sort of price action in the next month, month and a half or so, very likely Bitcoin is going to see, you know, thirty, twenty nine thousand dollars, something like that. Um, on top of that, I want to bring up this as well. I think this one's rather pertinent and it's very simple. And that is the monthly Mac Derp. <laughs> the monthly Mac derp right here. It's going to be crossing to the downside um, uh, upon Monday closure, assuming assuming that Monday closure is below. That's the monthly closure, by the way, uh, forty thousand seven hundred and sixty one. So to be fair, that's actually not a done deal right now. For what it's worth, it's it's, it's not a done deal just yet. Um, but it you know it's 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 more likely right now to be fair as well so long term now i'd like to set things in motion similar to the past that we've seen this uh, across the downside of one two three times again not too many three times does make a trend but uh but it's, it's worth it's worth discussing that um the last three times have been the bull trap of 2014 the bull trap of 2018 and uh, one, no, sorry, two months before the death drop of March 2020, the flu dump right there. So that also accompanied with the monthly PMAR, losing the moving average on this has been, well, a very consistent signal in the past as well. Again, not tested too many times, but uh, but has been relevant. And it's the same sort of setup as well, where, you know, essentially you're seeing it, that initial bounce off the white 20 simple on the price action right here, spends, you know, a few months uh, trading sideways from there, and then eventually dumps down to the green 55. That's what you see right here. Same thing over here. Same thing over here. And, you know, if Bitcoin were to do something similar over here, uh, yeah, I would be looking somewhere around the 55 uh, exponential moving average on the monthly. That's kind of like the worst case scenario. Can Bitcoin get wicks below? Yeah, I've seen it plenty of times before, but I wouldn't expect like, you know, consistent closures below and like major price action below essentially. So I, I do think that the super bears who are looking for humongously massive downside price action on like higher term time frame closing basis are misguided um, or at least not likely to happen. So this is where I like to balance my own statements out with like, look, can't be too fucking bullish, can't be too fucking bearish. Like Bitcoin's basically trading in a range between 30 and 40 and like 50. Or it's more like 35 and, and 45 if you want to be a little more exact. On top of that, uh, to add to the bearish case, the monthly stochastic momentum is going to be crossing to the downside with any sort of a closure, again on Monday, below 53,515. Uh, not great, seeing as any time that Bitcoin has uh, seen monthly momentum to the downside, plus losing the bullish control zone, which this area would be. Uh, that was, well, March 2018 right here. You already know where that is. That was the bull trap of 2018. And uh, March 20, or sorry, February 2014 over here, same area as before, the last bull trap uh, of 2014 cycle here as well. And then also leading into um, the flu dump over here as well, you actually did see this area rejected in uh, October, November, headed down the whole way until the, uh, until the March 2020 doom drop. Um, cool. All right, so we got that, we got that. Um, 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 yep, yeah, okay, we got that as well. And then I suppose the last thing that I'd point out here, and actually I haven't checked on this one today. So, oh yeah, this one's actually, this one actually might not be relevant anymore, but let's go check out traditional markets, uh, NASDAQ. So, uh, where's my NQ? There it is. Uh, actually, again, more likely to bounce off of a read like this, to be fair, coming into the end of the month. This one, god damn it, I did it again. Uh, when you see 
a major wick down like this on extremely heavy volume and then it it kind of like crawls its way it claws its way back up to a major moving average especially the uh, the 55 in this case you know it's more likely going to try a bounce up at least again let me see what would be relevant for this at least to the 382 which is about 14,800. So again, I do think that Bitcoin's more likely to bounce um, at least into February. Uh, and then the real question is, do we get a lower high somewhere between these regions right here, 15,200 and 15,500? Why is this relevant? Because Bitcoin and NASDAQ trade very similarly to each other, although Bitcoin a lot more high beta, especially to the downside. So it <laughs> would not be great if that, if that happened as well. Anyways, I think I'm gonna leave off the video right there. This one's way too long. I did not intend for it to be this long. I do apologize about that. Uh, just kind of going back here to the short-term time frames nothing really changed on, on the short-term time frame so i think i'll just leave it right there uh oh there is a couple things on cme on the short-term time frames again that do point towards again after cme opens probably into like monday around us open we probably do see a continuation of this bounce again full hour stochastic momentum is to the upside as long as above 36 675 hourly is not loading <laughs> is, is up as long as above 37,500. Six hour is probably freshly turning into the bullish control zone. Might I add above 37,500? And we already looked at the daily and maybe the 12 hours relevant here too. Yeah, 12 hours actually up as well above 37,500 as well. So that's kind of pivoted around a, a lot of major areas. Basically, it's to say, look, I'm looking for a bounce into the mid, maybe even deep 40s, uh, contingent upon Bitcoin just being above 34,500 until that area gets taken out to the downside. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm like short term sideways and up i suppose hopefully that was helpful i'm gonna be signing off now we'll be back on tomorrow with some more live stream analysis wednesday is going to be a little bit or sorry thursday is going to be a little bit strange because i will be traveling that day but uh other than that wishing you well once again take care and see you hopefully soon